Use ping and trace routes to test network connectivity. Use this topology. A 4321 router, the same router model for the ISP, an external server, call it external, a PC. PC A and switch one. A twenty nine sixty switch S one. Now use the copper straight through cables to connect Facet Ethernet six on S one to Facet Ethernet on PC gigabit zero zero one on R1 to Facet Ethernet 5 on S1 Gigabit 000 between routers Gigabit 000 on both sides and Gigabit 001 between the ISP router and external server On packet riser, 2960 switch does not support IPv6, so I will change this device. Use switch 3650. 3650. This model. No 3560. Use 3650. Switch 3650 does not have a Ethernet interfaces, so in this side, connected to the router, use gigabit 105. And the another side, connected to PC, use, instead of using Fast Ethernet, use gigabit 106. And remove this device. as well. This is the addressing table. Ping and trace route are two tools that are indispensable when testing TCP IP network connectivity. Ping is a network administration utility used to test the reachability of a device on an IP network. This utility also measures the round trip time for messages sent from the originating host to a destination computer. Traceroute Utility is a network diagnostic tool for displaying the path or route and measuring the transit delays of packets traveling an IP network. The routers used with CCNA hands-on labs are Cisco 4221, 
the switches used in the labs are Cisco Catalyst 3960. Other router switches and Cisco iOS versions can be used. Make sure that the routers and switches have been erased and have no external configurations. If you are unsure, contact your instructor. The default BIOS template used by the Switch Database Manager SDM does not provide IPv6 address capabilities. Verify that SDM is using either the dual IPv4 and IPv6 template or the LAN based routing template. The new template will be used after a reboot even if the configuration is not saved. On S1, for example, on a real app on a 2960 switch, verify with the show SDM preferred command, then use the following commands to assign the dual IPv4 and IPv6 template. As the default SDM template, go to global configuration mode with the configure terminal command and set SDM preferred dual IPv4 and IPv6 default command. Finally, end and reload to apply changes. Required resources to routers, one switch, two PCs, console cables, Ethernet cables. Cable the network as shown in the topology. Erase the configurations on routers and switches. Configure PCIP addresses and default gateways according to the addressing table. Use these configurations down here to configure PCA. And go to desktop and set IPv4 and IPv6 addresses. Okay, uh, this is the IPv4 for PCA. But this is incorrect, especially because uh, there is no default gateway. So use the topology. This is the IP address for PCA. This is the correct IP address for PCA. One that uh, and subnet mask should be this, 24, because this is the subnet mask for the company LAN, 24. And the default gateway is 1. So that means to use 182.168.1.1. And for IPv6, just this, 200, uh, 2001, db8, ACAD. Column, column, uh, column one, column, column ten, and the prefix is sixty-four. This IPv6 address, and the default gateway will be the link local address of the gigabit zero zero one interface on R one. FE eight zero column column one. And the external server use this IP. So now 165, 200, 226. Subnet mass is 27, so 27 means to use 224. This is the subnet mass on the addressing table, 27. And the default gateway is 225, the IP address of gigabit 001 on ISP. 209, 165, 200, 250, 225. And on IPv6, use this IPv6 address 200, column, column, 226. Prefix 64 and IPv6 gateway 
use this the link local address on ISP router FE80 column column to 25. Configure the RWAG and ISP routers and NS1 switch using the initial configurations provided below. So you can copy all these configurations to a notepad. Uh, edit this uh, file now copy this on our one Hosnay, no IP domain lookup, enable IPv6 unicast routing, configure gigabit 00 with IPv4, IPv6 link local with NAT and NAT shutdown, gigabit 01, IPv4, IPv6 link local, NAT. Okay, it's very well configured, NAT shutdown, default IPv4 static root, default IPv6 static root, and the not configuration. Would you like to enter initial configuration dialog now? Enter, enter, enable. Go to global configuration mode with the configure terminal command, then paste, then paste this. Paste. Enter. No issues, uh, no errors, very nice. Okay, um, ISP has name, no IP domain lookup, enable IPv6 unicast routing, interface gigabit 000, IPv4, IPv6, link local, no shutdown, gigabit 001. IPv4, IPv6, link local, not shut down, uh, IPv6, static root. Okay, then copy this to ISP. Go to CLI, now enter, enable, configure, terminal, paste. Okay, um, on ISP, IPv4 static root is not necessary because R1 is using NAT. S1, hostname, no IP domain lookup, VLAN1 configuration, IPv4, IPv6, link local, no shutdown. And the default gateway. So, Okay, um, on S1, the link local address is FE80, column, column 10. So it's possible to use 10 or 2, not problem. On interface gigabit 000 on R1, the link local address is also FE80 column column 2, but is placed on, on this link between R1 and ISP, and it's another link of the company LAN. It's a different link, so it's possible to configure as one with uh, FE80 column column 2. And not problem if you will use this configuration. Go to S1 and go to Physical. 
place the power supply, go to CLI, wait a moment, enter no, enter and uh, enable configure terminal and copy this, paste, enter. Very nice. The, I will modify the addressing table. I just modified this. The IPv4 and PCA and the link local address on S1. So why the default the default gateway on IPv6 on S1 is not configured because S1 will re recognize automatically the default gateway on IPv6. Configure an IP host table on the router R1. The IP host table allows you to use a host name to connect a remote device rather than IP address. Copy and paste the following configurations for the R1 router. The configurations will allow you to use the host names for ping and trace route commands on the router R1. For example, 226 is the external server, so use uh, external version 4. The IPv6 of external server will be external version 6 and copy this configuration to R1 and um, copy this to a notepad open R1 enter enable configure terminal and global configuration mode copy this copy paste The IPv4 configurations were uh, very well configured, but IPv6 configurations were not supported. Only IPv4. So no problem with that because I can use IPv6 addresses. And just ping command for basic network testing. Use the ping command to verify end to end connectivity. Ping operators by sensing internet control message protocol ICMP, echo request packets to the target host and then waiting for an ICMP response. It can record the round trip time and any packet loss or routing loops. IP packets have a limited lifetime on the network. IP packets use an 8 bit time to live IPv4 or hub limit IPv6 header field value, which specifies the maximum number of layer 3 hubs that can be traversed on the path to their destination. Host on a network will set its own A bit value with a maximum value of 255. So each time an IP packet arrives at layer 3 network device, this value is reduced by 1 before it is forwarded to its destination. So if this value eventually reaches 0, the IP packet is discarded. Test network connectivity from the R1 network using PCA. Ping from PCA to its default gateway. R1's gigabit 0001 interface. The default gateway of PCA is gigabit 001 on R1. 
So on PCA, on command prompt ping that I I, that IP address 1.8.168.1.1 this IP address on this network enter success for ICMP requests 32 bytes each were sent and the responses were received in less than one millisecond with no packet loss The transmission and reply time can be increased as the ICMP requests and responses are processed by more devices during the journey to and um, from a final destination. Okay, time one milliseconds or less than one millisecond, 32 bytes each. Uh, Time to leave to 55. No loss. Packets sent uh, four. Packets received four. This can also be done using the IPv6 address. So use the IPv6 address on gigabit 001 on R1 is one on this network so is this IP two zero zero one column db eight column ACAD column one column column one enter success 32 bytes, 1 millisecond, or less than 1 millisecond, time to leave, 255, send for, receive it for, no loss. From PCA, pick the addresses listed in the following table and record the average round trip time and IPv4 time to leave or IPv6 hub limit. Okay, from PCA, ping to this IP. This IP is from the, the IP before others of PCA. So PCA can ping to itself. Okay, average round trip time and Milliseconds, minimum zero milliseconds, maximum one milliseconds, average zero. So I prefer to use uh, less than one millisecond. The TTL is 128. Time to leave 128. Now, ping to uh, the IPv6 address on PCA, so ping to PCA by itself, 2001 DBA ACA 1 column column 10, okay, ping from PCA to PCA, but ping to itself, enter The average in this case three milliseconds. Okay, no, no problem is if is a different value may vary. And hub limit is the same value that time to leave one twenty eight. Ping to the default gateway 182XTA11. Ping to this interface, gigabit 001 on R1 from PCA.
average 0 milliseconds, I prefer to use less than 1 millisecond. Time to leap to 55. And ping to IPv6 address on the on the same interface. This interface, gigabit 001 on R1. Is this IPv6 address. And verify the average zero. I prefer to use uh, less than one millisecond time to leave. 255. Ping to S1. The IPv4 address on S1. Zero milliseconds. I prefer this. 255 time time to leave the IPv6 address on the on the same interface success zero milliseconds use less than less than one milliseconds have limit to 55 now ping to this IPv4 address 64100.02 is this IP address the IP address of the gigabit 000 interface on R1. So from PCA, ping that IP address 64100.02. Success average less than one milliseconds 255. The IPv6 address on the same interface. And gigabit 000 on R1. And this IPv6 address. Okay, less than one millisecond. Time to leave to 55. This IPv4 on ISP, the this IP address, uh, the IP address of gigabit 000 on ISP is 641001. Success. Okay. The first ping uh, failed. Not problem with this average zero milliseconds less than one time to leave to fifty four. Okay, now is uh, two fifty four because to reach from PCA to ISP you have one router, one hub. So this is a layer three device and will decrease the time to live by one. So if the time to live from PCA to R1 is 255, the time to live to from PCA to ISP will be decreased by one. So will be 254. Uh, is this value IPv6 address of gigabit 000 on ISP? That is uh, this this IPv6 address average less than one millisecond and the uh, time to leave to 54. Now ping ISP gigabit 001 this uh, this IP address 
of this inter the IP address of this interface, giga the IP address of gigabit 001 on ISP, this interface. Bring it to 165, 200, 255. Success. Average less than one millisecond. Time to leave to 54. Remember from PCA to reach ISP. You need to pass through uh, a router. This is a layer three device. The time to leap is decreased by one, two fifty four. Pick the IPv six address of the same interface. The IPv six address of gigabit zero zero one on ISP. Is this two hundred column column two twenty five? Average less than one millisecond. Time to leave two fifty four. Decrease it by one. And finally, ping to external server. 226. The first ping fails, but no pro not problem with that. Less than one millisecond, the average. And time to leave 126. Remember, the maximum value from of the time to leave from a PC to a PC is 128. In this case, from PCA to PCA, um, the ping to itself, the maximum value is 128. But the ping from PCA to the external server that also is a PC, the maximum value is 128, but it's reduced by, by 2. And the result is 126 because from PCA to external server, you have two routers, two layer three devices. So that's why it's decreased by two. Finally, ping to the IPv6 address of external server, 226. Time to leap 126 average less than one. Okay, time to leap is uh, is very similar to hop limit, but they have uh, different values. For example, in this case, um, the ping to IPv4 address. On R1 has 255 of time to leap. With using IPv6, time to leap is 255, with the hub limit is 64. Okay, the ping to S1, time to leap 255, but the hub limit will be 64. You will see this. Uh, Use Wireshark to see IPv6 hub limit value on, on a real network, on a Windows PC. And the ping for all IPv6, the hub limit will be 64. The ping to ISP. If time to leap is reduced by one, the hub limit will be reduced by one. Also, reduced by one and will be 63 in this case. In this case, also 63. That is the difference 
between time to live and home limit. Use extended ping commands on PCA. The default ping command sends four requests at 32 bytes each. It waits 4000 milliseconds four seconds for each response to be returned before displaying the request timeout message. Use the T option being external to verify external is reachable. Being to external being to 226 but use the option T then enter. To illustrate the results, when a host is unreachable, disconnect the cable between the ISP router and external, or shut down Gigabit 001 interface on the ISP router. Okay. While ping is verifying the connectivity, and disconnect this cable. And you will see the message destination host unreachable and request timeout message. Now reconnect the cable to gigabit 001. And ping will be successful. And ping will be successful again. Control C to stop this process. So when you disconnect the cable, ping will fail with these messages. Request timeout, destination has reachable. When you reconnect the cable, ping is successful. While network is functioning correctly, the ping command can determine whether the destination responded and how long it took to receive a reply from the destination. If a network connectivity problem exists, the ping command displays an error message. The above steps can be repeated for IPv6. Okay, so use the IPv6 address of external server and use the option D. And disconnect this cable. Request timeout. Request timeout. Then reconnect Control C to stop. What ICMP error messages did you receive? Request timeout message. Test network connectivity from the R1 network using Cisco devices. Ping command is also available on Cisco devices. Ping external server on the external network using the IPv4 address. Okay, from R1. Enter. Enable. Ping external server IPv4 address. The first ping fails, but all successful. The exclamation point indicates that the ping was successful from the R1 router to external server. The round trip takes an average of one millisecond with no packet loss as indicated by 100% success rate. 
In my case, there are five pings, but one ping failed and four pings success. So success success rate is 80%, four of five. Round trip, the average is this, zero milliseconds. Because the local host table was configured on the R1 router, you can ping external before on the external network. Okay, use the name ping external before. Remember, you are using this this name, so external use capital E. So use capital E. Enter. Five pings success. What is the IP address used? 209, 165, 200, 226. The IP before address of the external server. There are more options available for the ping command. At the command line interface, type ping and press enter. On R1, ping, press enter. Use the IPv6 as the protocol. The input is the IPv6 address of the external server and press enter to accept the default value for other options. Protocol, by default, IPv4, use IPv6. IPv6 address two hundred column column to two twenty six five pings repeat count enter size one hundred time out two extended commands now a sweep now success. You can use an extended ping to observe when there is a network issue. Start the ping command to 209165 200 226 with a repeat account of 50,000. Then disconnect the cable between the ISP router and the external server or shut down the gigabit 001 interface on the ISP router. Okay, ping. Use IPv4 by default, so press enter. Insert the IP address at the IPv4 address of the external server. 209, 165, 200, 226. Repeat count. The example says 10,000 10, pings. Data, data gram size 100, timeout 2. Extended commands. No. Sweep. No. While Pink is testing the connectivity, disconnect this cable. U for un unreachable and the dot means that the pin fails that you that you that you then reconnect and ping now is responding Press Ctrl Shift 6 to stop the ping command if desired. 
Control Shift 6 to stop the pick. The letter U in the results indicate that a destination is unreachable. An error protocol data unit PDU was received by the R1 router. Each period in the output indicates that the ping timeout while waiting for a reply from external server. In this example, 1% of the packets were lost during the simulated network outage. You can also use the following commands for the same result. Ping the IPv4 address and repeat 10,000 of times um, and also for IPv6. Okay, Control Shift 6 to stop this. Success rate is 97%. Nine hundred sixty seven of nine hundred ninety round trip minimum average and maximum minimum is zero average zero and maximum eight milliseconds. The ping command is extremely useful when troubleshooting network connectivity. However, ping cannot indicate the location of the problem when a ping is not successful. Tracer or trace root command can display network latency and path information. Use the tracer and trace root commands for basic network testing. The commands for tracing routes can be found on PCs and network devices. For a Windows based PC, the tracer command uses ICMP messages to trace the path to the final destination. The trace root command utilizes the user datagram protocol UDP datagrams for tracing routes to the final destination for Cisco devices and other Unix-like PCs. You will examine the trace route commands and determine the path that a packet travels to its final destination. You will use tracer command for the Windows PCs and trace route command from the Cisco devices. Use tracer command from PCA to external server. Go to PCA and tracer tracer to the IPv4 address of, of external server. Now you have three lines. The first line is the first layer three device is the IP address of gigabit 001 on R1. This IP address, 192.168.11, the default gateway of PCA. The second line, the IP address is 64.100.01, this IP address. For the next layer 3 device, the ISP router, the IP address of gigabit 000. And the, fun, the final line is uh, the IP before address of the external server, the destination. Okay, remember that a PC or server also works on layer 3 and, and is the final line. Explore additional options for the tracer command. Use the D option. Notice that the IP address of 209.165.200.226 is not resolved as external. Okay, you can use the D option here. Okay, invalid command because packet tracer does not, does not accept the the options for tracer command. So basically, it's the same result as the previous verification because the previous command. The tracer results indicates the path from PCA to external. That is the host name for the external server. And the D option will show the 
IP address and not the host name. Use the trace root command from the R1 router to extend. Go to R1, use trace root to IP before address of external server. Now you have two two lines. The first line is the IP address of gigabit 000 on ISP. That is the first layer three device the first router and the second line is the IP before address of external server. Now use IPv6 trace route to 001 db8 acnd 200 column column 226. Also two lines the first line, the IPv6 address of gigabit 000 on ISP. And the second line, the IPv6 address of the external server. Trace root command has additional options. You can use the question mark or just press enter after typing trace root at the prompt. Trace root enter. Now you have the options, protocol, uh, for example, IPv4, press enter, IP address, IP address of uh, uh, external server, source. You can use the this IP address, the gigabit 000 IP address, 64 64102 numeric display noun timeout three probe count three minimum tight lib one maximum theory okay two lines or type trace root and question mark this question mark to see the options use an IPv4 or IPv6 address. Or use a word for the destination address or host name. Troubleshoot the topology, copy and paste the following configuration into the ISP router. Copy this to Notepad. Now shut down and, and copy this. Go to ISP and enable configure terminal. So you need to go to global, global configuration mode and paste. Now, from R1 network, just ping and trace Tracer or trace root commands to troubleshoot and correct the problem on the ISP network. Use the ping and tracer commands from PCA. Now verify the ping from PCA to external server. Go to PCA. And ping the external server. Destination host unreachable. The pin fails. So I don't, I, I don't know where is the, the where is the problem. So it's time to use tracer. Tracer. Okay, uh, control C to, to stop this. Control C. Verify. Uh, 
the first line is a uh, success and I two one sixty a one one is the IP address of the default gateway of PCA the gigabit zero zero one on R one. The second line is sixty four one hundred zero one. This IP address the gigabit zero zero on ISP. Then next lines shows uh, the ping to the same interface. The request timeout. So the third line should should be the IP address of the external server. So I can determine that the problem is placed here between ISP and the external server. Maybe the cable is disconnected. Maybe the interface on the server is is not configured or has a problem and or the gigabit 001 on ISP is not configured or has a problem. Um, so I can determine that the problem is placed here or on the server or maybe on the ISP. And so use the show commands to examine the running configurations for the ISP router. Okay, you go to ISP, show running config. Take a look on the configurations on gigabit 001. Interface gigabit 001. Use this IP before address 192.168.81. And this is an incorrect IP address because it should be something like 209.165.200.225. So this IP before address is incorrect. Correct the found issues. Okay, on ISP also you can use show IP interface brief command and you will see the IP for address of gigabit 001 incorrect IP address. So use the correct IP address. Go to addressing table and you will see that the IP address should be 209.165.200.225 with the subnet mass of 27. Configure terminal interface gigabit zero zero one IP address. It's not necessary uh, remove the existing. It's not necessary to remove the current IPv4 address. The new IPv4 address will overwrite the current. 209, 165, 200, 225, subnet mass, 224, uh, 227, but it's 224. Enter. Now, repeat the ping from PCA. Success. Repeat the tracer. Success. Now ping the IPv6 address on external server from PCA to external server, but using IPv6. Request timeout. Okay, ping fails, then I don't know where is the problem, so I'll use tracer. Tracer. Control C to stop this. The first line is very well configured. 
The first line is responding very well because this IPv6 address is the IPv6 address of gigabit 001 on R1. The second line is the IPv6 address of the gigabit 000 interface on ISP. And the third line should be the IPv6 address of the next device, the external server. The result is a, a loop, an infinite loop. There is a problem here between ISP and the external server. So on ISP, go to privilege exit mode with the end command and use show running config to verify if there is a problem on gigabit 001. Because this is gigabit 001. Um, this is an incorrect IPv6 configuration because it should be 200 and now 201. So remove this and add a new IPv6 address, the correct IPv6 that should be this. This. Okay. Also, you can use show IPv6 interface brief command to view the IPv6 address. And this should be two of one. Uh, this should be 200 and, and not two of one. Configure terminal interface gigabit 001. Remove this existing IPv6 address to C0 DB8 ACAD 2 of 1, 2 of 25. And also add the prefix. The prefix is 64. Okay, the prefix is 64. 64. Andrew. Uh, but to remove, use the now keyword now IPv6 address enter and add the new the correct IPv6 address, IPv6 address and use 200. Enter. Now from PCA Ping, success, tracer, success. What could prevent ping or trace route responses from reaching the originating device beside network connectivity issues? Firewall on PCs, access list command, routing issues, interface is down, network delay. If you ping a non-existent address on the remote network, such as 209.165.200.227, what is the message displayed by the ping command? What does this mean? If you ping a valid host address and receive this response, what should you check? Request time out or periods. This means that there was no response in the default time period. Some of the items you may check, router is down, destination host is down, return route to your device and latency of the response is not more than the default time period. Okay, from PCA ping to 227, a uh, non-existent IP address on the network. Okay, this was the tracer. So this is uh, the IP address of gigabit 001 on R1. The IP address uh, of gigabit uh, 000 on ISP with the third line request timeout control C to stop this 
and try the ping to a non-existent IP address on the network. Request timeout. Request timeout. Uh, for example, go to R1, enable ping to a non existent IP before address, period, period, period. If you ping an address that does not exist in any network in your topology, such as 182.168.5.3 from a Windows-based PC, what is the message displayed by ping command? What does this message indicate? Okay, for example, from PCA ping. 192.168.5.3 Destination host and ratio and try to use tracer the first line is the default gateway the second line is ISP and the third line also ISP so Request timeout. Control C to stop this. Okay, on R1. Okay, um, on PCA, the answer is destination host unreachable. This is the message, the error message, but on R1, being 182, 168.5.3, U. Unreachable. Okay, it's unreachable. So, destination host unreachable. This message indicates that there is no route to the destination as the network is not listed by the routing table. The difference between this test and the previous test was that this. IP address is a non-existent IP address on an existent subnet. So that's why the answer is a requested timeout on Windows PC and a period on a Cisco iOS. But in the second test, the non-existent IP address is also placed in a non-existent subnet in the network. So that's why the answer is destination host unreachable, because there, there is no a route in the routing table on the router. So there is no a route to reach that subnet, that non-existent subnet on the router. What is the IPv4 TTL value set to the Windows host? What is the IPv4 TTL value set on a Cisco device? Windows sets the TTL value to 128 and Cisco device will set the TTL value to 255. Okay. When you make a ping from a Windows PC to another Windows PC, from a PC to or from a PC to a server is the TTL is 128, but the maximum value is 128. But from a PC to a router, a Cisco router, the maximum value of TTL is 255. Or a Cisco switch, the maximum value is 255. What is the IPv6 hub limit value set by Windows host? What is the IPv6 hub limit value set to a Cisco device? Windows sets the TTL value to 128, which is the same as IPv4 TTL value. And the Cisco device will set the TTL value to 64. OK. 
okay, from from Windows PC to another Windows PC, the hub limit of TTL is 128. But using IPv6 from a Windows PC to a Cisco device, the hub limit is 64. From a PC to a Cisco device, the hub limit is 64. The maximum value of the hub limit. Thank you.